published 1716 est the 16th of December 2017 updated 1716 est the 16th of December 2017 Rob Collins looks surprisingly relaxed for a man so close to his busiest day of the year. He's the boss of the quintessential British middle-class retailer, Waitrose, and, as well as the usual Christmas rush, this year he is under intense pressure from all sides. Collins is facing worries over the impact of Brexit on his suppliers and the threat of losing customers to cheaper rivals as even well-heeled shoppers succumb to the lure of Aldi and Lidl when the neighbors aren't ing. This week he will be so busy he has lined up 1,000 turkey runners staff dedicated only to the job of fetching and carrying the birds, as well as hiring 5,000 temporary staff to make operations run smoothly. Challenge Rob Collins is braced for the busiest day of the year at Waitrose in his first major interview since taking the job, he is cagey about how well his 350 stores will do this Christmas. You never really know until the final week, he says. But Waitrose should benefit from the festive, snob factor, as we strive to impress visiting friends and relatives. Sales of quail's eggs and premium bacon are expected to more than double because shoppers want to treat their guests to a lavish breakfast. And there's a 15% spike in the sales of polish in December as hosts and hostesses flick the cobwebs off the banisters. Oneington of us even buys posher than usual Lou Roll at Christmas to show off to visitors. Our tendency to trade up is good news for a retailer like Waitrose, trying to tempt us with butter-basted turkey with a smoked bacon lattice chocolate ginger mince pies and Heston Blumenthal's Persian spiced Christmas pudding. Collins is obsessive about the food. Discussions about product details go, right down to the size of the chrome on the breaded prawns, I love that, he says. He's even trying out novel packaging for his Dutchy brand tomatoes, made partly from tomato leaves. So committed is he to bringing his wares to the tables of Britain that he plans to spend £1.5 million on a new kitchen at the head office in Bracknell, Berkshire, a project beyond the dreams of even the most lavish home cook. We go right down to the size of the chrome on the breaded prawns. I love all that the kitchen, which will be used to test new product ideas, will be four times the size of the existing facility, have twice as many chefs and will include cookery theater for training staff as well as a food library, he says, it's state of the art and will take things to a whole new level. We've done a lot this year but we want to ramp that up even further, this facility is bigger and better, before his new fantasy kitchen arrives, however, those of us who are infuriated at how the festivities seem to kick off earlier each year should spare a thought for Collins. Waitrose starts offering delivery slots three months in advance and is selling mince pies at the beginning of October. This week is when we see a very significant surge. Well on average week and that builds to Saturday, our busiest day, rush hour, arrives at 11 a.m. on December 23rd probably the time for sensible people to avoid shops altogether. Luxury Waitrose Christmas pudding for a man in charge of a vast logistical operation that would make many a general quaver. Collins is remarkably calm. Waitrose lorries will drive nearly a million miles in the run-up to Christmas, and stores will be open for more than 750 extra hours the week before. But will this colossal effort pay off? There is a buzz around our shops and the excitement is building, he says. By Christmas Eve, I will have a very clear view on how we've done but I am encouraged by what I can see at the moment, he confesses the chain is not immune to. The pressure's profit in the first half of the year fell 17%, which Collins attributes to Waitrose taking some pain in order to keep prices down for shoppers. We need to make sure that farming in the UK remains competitive with the rest of the world. Other competitors have also raised their game too. I mentioned that the packaging on some products in cheaper stores looks uncannily like his own. He points out he's cut prices on its basics, essential, range. But his solution is not to race his stores to the bottom, but rather to be more waitros, dig deeper into the middle class essence that has made the store such a favorite. For me, all this reinforces the importance of making waitros even more waitros. My obsession is to find ways to turbocharge product innovation. That allows us to compete in a very different space to the discounters. Collins, a father of three, has kept a relatively low profile compared with his exuberant predecessor, Mark Price, who embraced his nickname, the Chubby Grocer. He says he counteracts the effects of all the delicious food in store by riding 20 miles a week on his bike. It's a really good tonic and helps keep the pounds off. He stepped up from his previous role at Waitrose just two months before last year's EU referendum and wakes up before 6 a.m., tuning into Farming Today at 5.45 a.m. each morning on Radio 4 before catching the Today program every single morning. It's all about Brexit, what is going. 
to happen and the uncertainty. Collins is sprucing up all 350 shops over the next two years but is putting a break on new openings to just two or three next year. Compared with about 10 a year previously a month ago Collins organized a meeting with his main suppliers, British farmers, to discuss those concerns. We had over 400 farmers come to Telford. A gathering like that is unique and very few companies could do it. They're anxious about what it might mean for them, that is the great challenge of Brexit, he's worried about maintaining food standards, animal welfare, and strict food labeling, or, as he puts it, being really clear where food is coming from, he adds another concern, the EU is actually putting money into farming, not just through subsidies, but also research and making farming more productive. It will be very important that this investment continues. We also need to make sure that UK farming remains productive and competitive with the rest of the world. He's sprucing up all 350 shops over the next two years but is putting a break on new openings to just two or three next year, compared with about 10 a year previously. That's very much a competitive decision as a Brexit one, he says. All I would say is that making new shops work today is a lot harder than it was five years ago. Each pound I want to invest, I want to do while pleasing the most customers.